Hello again, my name is Ernest Minu. Let's settle for the details now. And we begin from the courts. The Supreme Court has, in a unanimous decision, upheld as legal Ghana's military cooperation agreement with the United States of America. The Ashanti Regional Youth Organizer of the NDC in 2018, Ernest Bojajefi, sued government, insisting the agreement was not in the interest of the state. We'll bring you details. Joseph Akable was in court. He'll bring you details of this decision by the Supreme Court. But let's talk health now because the health minister says some samples taken for COVID-19 are testing positive for H1N1. He says the virus is going to be around for a long time. He has been admonishing the citizenry to respect all COVID-19 health protocols. The health minister also raised concern about face masks and how some persons are disregarding the directive to use them. He wants churches and benevolent organizations to help the vulnerable. Here are highlights of the briefing that ended a while ago. Fortunately for us in our country, the scientists are yet to tell us why we are dying, why we are not getting severely critically ill, and why even our spread is not as huge and fast as is happening elsewhere. They have told us basic things that we have to do. So what we have to learn is that we should first of all make our minds that our way of life is going to change for a very long time to come. So we need to begin to advise ourselves that to enable the scientists fight the battle to win, to enable our president's dream realized, we have to change our way of life, if not permanently, at least temporarily, to make us assure ourselves that now we don't have such problem with coronavirus. It is not killing us that much, but we are all scared to the bone marrow. Why? Because it is spreading. And we don't even want people who have been tested positive to get close to us. Yes, because we may be infected. So I'm only going to talk about the few things we need to do to allay this. The president, on several occasions he has spoken, continues to advise that if you don't have the thing very, very critical seriously for you to do, please stay at home. For this, I still, after several weeks, several speeches by the president, we are still not listening. So some will just come out, no matter what. And they have told us that the disease has no legs. It moves from person to person. So if you don't stay in your home and you come out, and you have it, you get somebody else. If you don't even have it, it is likely you pick it from the streets and take it back to your home to invite others who are there. So why are we not staying at home? At the workplace, we have been asked that don't let all your staff come to work at the same time. Some companies are allowing people to stay home for two weeks, then they will change like a shift system so that they will get space to observe social distancing. In banks, companies that are making huge monies have asked that let some of our staff stay at home. What is the implication? It is reducing productivity. Their revenue are going down, but they have agreed to observe that. So those of us who come out just to a chat, to sit somewhere and do kokosa, why can't we stay at home? We know the Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Patrick Abuaje, is raising concern about decline in other health care services like immunization and antenatal care and outpatient attendance. He's warning there could be repercussions. This disease says that it has a high infection rate but low death. What it means is that this disease may stay with us, as the minister said, and that we need to be ready until we discover we have an effective vaccine this disease is going to be with us. Despite all these seemingly high figures, um, which we actually searched for to be able to assist and contain, the infection rate in this country remains low, 
in comparison with other countries, as I mentioned, they tell us that the measures that we have put in place, hopefully put in place, that you have also abided with, has saved as well. The disease has started affecting other sectors, including the health sector. At the last quarter of our review, we have had immunization services coming down. We've had road promotion of children coming down, coming down, antenatal and outpatient attendances are declining. If this goes on, it will have consequential effect on health outcomes in the end. Measures have been put in place that allow to be able to provide services for you in safety, safeguarding your encouraging or to make access care so that we do not have another challenge on our hands because of reduced access to care. What it means is that people who are sick may not be seeking care. That is not what we want. Institutionalizing and adhering to these key measures, which we'll say from the minister and other, all other speakers from Mass uh, Mass Extra, is a new norm, such as hand hygiene, social and, distan and physical distancing, wear of masks and proper sanitation, even without the current restrictions, must be institutionalized and maintained if you are going to contain this disease. By doing this, no need to contain COVID-19. We prevent diarrheal diseases and other emergency diseases, which all are transmitted through the same methodology. What we want to say is that being COVID-19 positive is not equivalent to death, as people perceive. And so let's try and work against stigma, encourage all people to test, be tested and avail themselves to be isolated and contained. Let's do some more stories. Security agencies in the Northeast region have arrested 23 foreigners made up of 15 Togolese and 8 Burkina Bays as part of ongoing operations to enforce the border closure directive by the government. According to the Regional Immigration Command, the foreign nationals who entered the country through unapproved routes were arrested after officers deployed at Nyanpanduri. Arrest intercepted a U-turn vehicle suspected to have left Garu Township. Sources tell Joy News the arrest followed intelligence received by border guards at the Misiga in land post that some foreigners were sneaking into the country through the Nyanpandui road to Kumasi and Accra. Upon this information, the Northeast Region Police Command Chief Superintendent uh, William Peter Ando mobilizes men at the Bumprugu Command to quickly effect a, erect a tent and create a checkpoint to intercept the foreigners. Subsequently, the vehicle was intercepted and after interrogation of the passengers on board, the 23 foreigners are made up of 12 males, 5 females, 6 children. The Northeast Regional Commander who confirmed the arrest to join us said the foreigners when questioned said they were farm laborers traveling from Kumasi and its environs to look for work. Let's head back to the courts because the Supreme Court has, in a unanimous decision, upheld as legal Ghana's military cooperation agreement with the United States of America. The Ashanti Regional Youth Organizer of the NDC in 2018, Boja Jemfi, sued government, insisting the agreement was not in the interest of the state. Now, he urged the Apex Court to set aside the agreement. A seven-member panel of justices presided over by Chief Justice Kwesi Enenyebua this morning the Describe the case as unmeritorious. Court correspondent Joseph Akablay joins me on the uh, vast uh, Skype for more on this. Joseph, any specific reason given by the court for its decision and how they describe it as unmeritorious? Uh, no specific reasons were given, and as, except that Chief Justice uh, Christian Nyebuan did indicate that the written judgment of the court is almost ready and they will be made available at the court's registry. And so uh, the lawyers in the case and the individuals who brought this particular matter to the court can have a copy of it and study it and decide what next line of action should take. I've been engaging with Ali Pilimabamava. He is 
uh, a legal practitioner who represents Mr. Jenfi in this particular matter, he makes the point that at this material moment, they don't have much to chew on because they are simply struggling to understand why an agreement that was not signed by the president before it went to parliament for ratification is said to be legal. And so until the Supreme Court uh, gives a decision on that particular uh, matter, as in having access to the decision and reading through, they are unable to decide what next line of action to take. And I think we can listen to him now. We can't make anything out of it because mm -hmm. the Supreme Court did not give the reasons why it dismissed the, the, the case against the, the government. Mm -hmm. But does this end the matter for you? I mean, once the court is essentially is saying that uh, there's nothing wrong with the agreement. Well, um, they dismissed the case. And we don't know why they did that because as it is now, we've not been afforded you know, the, the opportunity to look at the reasons. Uh, when we get the reasons, we will know why the Supreme Court is saying that an agreement that was not even signed by the government of Ghana is a legal binding instrument on the government or the state. Um, I think um, in the coming days, we will be able to expatiate or explain or even uh, question what the Supreme Court's decision uh, has been. But for now, I can't engage in any technical analysis of the decision. And Joseph is still with me on Skype. Uh, Joseph, we understand there was another decision uh, made by the court today relating to the bond issue by government in 2018. I recall that Daimok took on the finance minister. Uh, give us some more background into this story and what the court decision was. And so this related to the two point. Uh, two five billion dollar bond issued by government in 2018. Yeah. Uh, the finance minister was actually accused of issuing a bond uh, to his family and friends. Mm -hmm. That's an accusation that was made by the opposition NDC as a party as well as its minority MPs in parliament. Mm -hmm. uh, the matter went to Shrad. Shrad cleared the finance minister of uh, the conflict of interest allegation despite finding that they were one of the companies that may have been related to this particular transaction that he did not declare his interest in. They however said that he did no wrong in the issuance of the bond. The bond was done in a transparent manner. Mm -hmm. A diamond headed to the Apex Court saying that Shrad exceeded its mandate when Shrad made those pronouncements. And so they wanted the Shrad decision that cleared the finance minister to be set aside. Just like it happened in the military cooperation agreement, the Supreme Court did not give the reason behind its decision except to say that this particular matter by unanimous decision is unmeritorious. The Chief Justice presided over this particular one. He made the point that the decision will be made available at the court registry for them to find out the reasoning behind it. Uh, the parties in the particular case are also saying that uh, they want to have a copy of the decision and understand the reason before they decide the next line of action. But did you engage them at all? What was their reaction following the court's pronouncement? Uh, they make their point that they find they are unhappy about this decision. As far as they are concerned, Shrat should not have made those pronouncements. And so they are looking forward to understanding the legal basis and the reasoning behind uh, the Apex Court's decision. And so that will inform their next line of action. But until that is done, uh, this is the last uh, decision that remains in terms of the bond issuance. Joseph, thank you very much. And of course, we'll be following that uh, to get the written, uh, written uh, you know, judgment by the court and see what more we can make of it. As part of measures to curb the many road traffic accidents which claim over 2,000 lives in Ghana annually, the Northern Regional Minister is calling on the National Road Safety Authority to introduce on the spot fine for drivers who leave their broken down vehicles on the road. Alhaji Salifu Said noted many lives have been lost in the country as a result of these faulty vehicles often left in the middle of the road. He tells Joy News until such action is taken to serve as a deterrent, drivers abandoning their vehicles, or faulty vehicles on the road will persist. Alhaji Salif Fusaid spoke to Joy News as part of the Arrival Life campaign. If uh, the road safety units, they can come out with uh, on the spot fines to vehicles owners whose vehicle gets break down on the roads and they don't move them immediately out of the major roads because those things cause deadly, deadly, deadly accidents. Like somebody have a long a truck, either a long truck, a tractor, a combine, a grader, a tipper truck, they just pack it uh, just for the fact that there is a, a, a technical fault. And they leave the vehicle on the road. 
If they don't have money to fix the, the, the vehicle, they must look for tow vehicles to tow it on as well. They should, the vehicle shouldn't stand for more than uh, 24 hours on a route because it is very common in our part of the country. And uh, sometimes they are in some hidden corners, caves, and it's very terrible. Now, in a related development, the new Patriotic Party chairman for a Sojaman constituency, Dr. Achia Dakwa, has been involved in a serious accident on the Suchari Akosumbo Road in the eastern region. Dr. Achia Dakwa sustained multiple fracture in the right leg and hand and had several injuries. He is currently on admission at the Akosumbo Hospital, awaiting referral to the St. Joseph's Hospital in Koforidja. A close source to Dr. Achia Dakwa disclosed to Max Okudako that his vehicle ran into a broken down truck parked in the middle of the road without reflectors or any warning sign. And Maxwell joins me on phone for with more on this. Uh, Maxwell, we understand that this happened, uh, you know, along that stretch. Tell us a bit more about the accident. Was he driving alone? Yeah, Dr. Achia Dakwa uh, was returning from Accra to um, the constituency. Mm -hmm. We understand they went to pick some uh, campaign vehicles for orphan constituency. So okay. uh, when returning from Accra to Akosomo, we are told that that's then happened exactly between Dorim and Estuchari, that stretch of road. And then upon uh, reaching Estuchari, uh, 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 it is reported that there was this broken track in the middle of the road. That stretch do not have street lights on it so visibility at night is very poor and the track the broken track had no warning sign or reflector and uh, so the 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 constituency chairman drove into he he, he ran into the vehicle and then the the the, the vehicle is a v8 vehicle it is a, a damage beyond repair so uh, other people using the road uh, spotted him and uh, they, they, they went to his re rescue, pulled him from the car, and then rushed him to the uh, Akosomo uh, Hospital where he's currently uh, receiving treatment. As we speak now, the truck is still in the middle of the road and uh, it, it, it has not been at attended to. So basically this is what happened last night. So the truck that caused the accident is still there and his vehicle is also there as we yeah. speak. Exactly. The truck is still uh, at the scene and, and, and the damaged vehicle is also at the scene. Uh, we are told that the constituency executives are currently with the Suchari police trying to find ways and means to get the damaged vehicle and the truck off the road. Maxwell, help us. When exactly did this accident happen? Uh, the accident, according to close sources, happened around between 9 and 10. Around okay. 10. 10 p.m. there, there about uh, last night. It, it happened around 10 p.m. last night uh, between the Dorim section of the road and then Esukari. So that's this was last time. night, and unfortunately, we still have the truck parked in the middle of the road. Uh, we'll get to the police to find out what is happening. But what can you say about the other people who were with him in the vehicle? Fortunately the for for him, he was the only person on board. Uh, okay. We understand he traveled with other members of his executive, but they were in a different car. So uh, they were fortunate to have escaped the accident. So he was the only person in that car, and okay. then he sustained several uh, fractures on the right uh, leg and then the, the right hand as well. He had some injuries on the head mm -hmm. and then broke the neck. Uh, what that cut were recorded in the in the in the process so he was the only person on board very well. and then the, that is what I've, I've maxwell said. thank you very much for bringing us up to speed on this very worrying incident involving the constituency chairman uh for the issue german area we'll be following up on this and bring you more remember to arrive alive you're watching news today with me and as here on your journey's channel we're also live on joy prime coming up in business four prices expected to go down by about two percent in the current pricing window Daryl Kual has details after the break. Don't go away.
Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to Business. My name is Daryl Kwao. The Chamber of Petroleum Consumers Ghana says export prices are expected to go down by about 2% in the current pricing window as effects of coronavirus continue to bite. Even though crude prices collapsed on the world market some weeks ago by falling more than 30% in a day of trading, the city came under pressure and some of the gains made have seen significant erosion influencing the decision of oil marketing companies to reduce prices by not more than 2%, even though the market is expecting a bigger drop in prices. Here's Executive Secretary of the Chamber, Duncan Amwa. Uh, we do not expect anything but some reductions at this point. Uh, it couldn't have been anything in the 4 or 5%, but 1 2% further reductions I'm sure would would be quite quite okay. Although uh, prices on the international market seem to be, you know, inching up a bit, it is still quite low as far as finished products are concerned. And we do think that uh, a one percent, two percent reduction for the next window should be fair. Even when people are saying that, look, we think that we should we should see greater reductions than what we have been seeing over the period. You see, what the reductions we are seeing is on one of the three components of your pricing. So your price build-up have got three stages. The ex-refinery component, which is the first one, the actual cost of the product, is where the reductions have come. Now the ex-depot, which is a combination of ex-refinery price together with your taxes by government, right? The taxes have not gone down. And then you come to ex-pump price which is the margins that you add to the taxes to X refinery price to come to the X pump price. The margins have also not gone down. So whilst we look at just one component and insist that because that one component has dropped to, let's say, zero, the entire price bill should drop to zero, I'm afraid we may not get it that way because there are other costs, ancillary costs. There are other charges and taxes that eventually go to tell how much you pay at the pumps. And these taxes have not been reduced. It will be quite unfair at this point to even think about reducing these taxes because the state itself is losing heavily. And the little that they could be able to rake in uh, for developmental programs, we should be able to assist them too. So. Do you think that? Domestic airline operators are in strict adherence to the social distancing protocol, leaving seats vacant to ensure adequate spacing amongst passengers. But this decision will have cost implications. My colleague Sheila Tamaklo was on board Passion Air to explore the implications with airline operators and passengers. For domestic airlines like Passion Air, flying during the coronavirus crisis means they have to operate under exceptional circumstances. They have to implement a number of hygienic measures such as regular hand sanitizing, compulsory wearing of face masks and a principal guideline of social distancing on board. In order to ensure the social distancing on board, some seats are left unoccupied, translating into lower passenger load for the airlines. Samuel Tichi is the marketing and sales manager for Passion Air. Averagely, we take 35, 50, thereabout. So uh, it's, it's a good load. But with the social distancing, currently we are averaging or taking about 38 passengers. So you have about 40 seats going waste. Um, those are. But um, parents traveling with their children can do that. They can sit together. That is allowed. Observing social distancing on board appears to be something quite challenging for the airlines. Because for most of these airlines, it means giving about one third of their seats away. There's empty seats. And this is money that will be lost. So the question now becomes, how will the airlines absorb this cost? And are passengers willing to pay an extra city or more just to ensure their safety as they continue to fly? I'll say yes and no, because some people may not be able to afford the increase in prices. Others may be able to afford. So this will depend on the individual. But for me, where I sit, um, Increasing a bit will not be bad, but if it is increased to a level that to affect a lot of people, then you see that they, 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 they will not be able to get the number of passengers that they want to in order to make up their, 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 their cost. One of the impacts of COVID has been its impact of, uh, on the economy now and then going ahead. So I think that it might be difficult to say customers are going to absorb any increases in prices, but as people are asking for 
stimulus packages and all that. I think the government should come in now, whether it has to do with taxes or anything like that, so that um, the burden rather goes to the government, so to speak. And that's your business updates. Sports is up next. Good afternoon, my name is Kadi, and this is Showbiz. Now, to my very first story. Musician uh, Bisakede has apologized for saying that the media is fake during the questioning and answering session with his fans on Twitter. Now, speaking on Daybreak Hits on uh, Hits FM, the musician said that he knows some people are offended by the tweet, although he had no intention to hurt anyone. Now, on Friday, Bisakede responded to a fan's tweet about why his songs are not getting airplay with the answer, it's an agenda. They have taken some money to do that. If you love my music, uh, keep loving it. The media is fake. Hashtag Ask Bisakede. Now explaining how the tweet got online, the Mansa hate maker said that his PA tweeted that without his approval. When the Abu Bisakede didn't pay, oh. And then um, Bisakede said, how, how did the funeral, funeral song thing happen? <laughs> you understand? <laughs> That's a funny thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, kind of, how I mean, did the funeral thing happen? Would you say that Daddy Lumba, any funeral songs. But he has funeral songs. But he has funeral songs. Do Mane Champong has funeral songs. Do I have funeral songs? But have you ever recorded any funeral songs? I haven't recorded any funeral songs. So why are people tagging? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's so funny. You understand? No, do you know what? No, listen. For me, I, I, if, 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 if you are an, if you are a crazy high life fan, you must know that almost all the big, the big stars, big high life musicians, they are you authorize him to answer questions that are that are coming from followers that some may be very deep some the may thing be is extreme. That, that's why i said um it doesn't mean to be, be um, just because um he's tweeted something like that doesn't mean to i don't know anything about it i do but just the context now or the or the year you know right so um i know it's going to offend a lot of people which um if I said use a medium way to apologize to a lot of people, but then I told him to tweet. It, it doesn't change the fact that. So what um, did you tell him to tweet? So somebody asked a question, and I told him to tweet that yes, some people in the media is fake, which uh, you and I both know that is true. You understand? Some people are fake. Um, but the part, um, the part where he said that um, that that wasn't it. What did I said. What I said is, which I even said on your show the, the, the last time you saw me here, said, Encophobia has started agenda, sitting on radio, and almost started some work. I said, my, my career was drowning. That was from 2016, after Mansa and Brother Brother, after VGMAs. People started doing that, right? But then um, after that, you know, so okay, I'm a I was there. Um, after that, you know, Bibi Ame release Bibi Ame release Bibi Ame the Betwa Bonten Kwa Na Obi Be Humi Ochina Obi Obi Kwa Se Okay Day Yetu Onkache Maybe Says Oh What the Hammer I Say I Am At The Hammer now, from winning BET to being nominated for a Grammy in 2017 and receiving two billboard plaques, Stone Boy has revealed that he, sh he thinks he should have more recognition in Ghana and more than he's getting. And he revealed more in this interview with Cool FM in Nigeria via Instagram Live. I don't know how they see it here. Uh, we like to check track records here in Nigeria. I'm talking about music. Well, the things that matter to Nigerians is your numbers and mm -hmm. uh, your, your, your plaques your awards mm -hmm. and recognition. Yeah. Now, first of all, Sizzla is a Jamaican great. For you to be able to work with Sizzla, mm -hmm. that's a big deal. <laughs> now, for you to get like two recognitions like from Billboard, that is a big deal. So do you think, I don't know how they see back in Ghana, for us, I already said it, numbers matters, um, uh, your recognition, those mm -hmm. things matter, right? And their, their mm -hmm. skills. For example, if you get a Grammy, let me give you an example. Brother Boy got a Grammy nomination in Nigeria. It is a big deal. If you get a Grammy nomination here in Nigeria, it is mm -hmm. a big deal. You got a Grammy nomination with Morgan Heritage, right? 2017, bro. 17. Do you think the respect you get from your country, <laughs> do you think you, you, you think, do you feel you think you get the right or res deserve respect in your country? Honest, honestly. Yo, but this, I mean, this is a very honest question. I'm going to make the headlines for this answer. But yeah, it's, it's yeah. the truth. 
Um, this is one part of it that is left to Ghanaians, you know what I mean, that we have to actually realize what it is. A majority of us don't even know what it is, as much as Nigerians. Okay, so that was the one we're talking about. He wants more recognition. And I think he deserves it. Well, okay. he's good. Uh, I don't know what he wants, but maybe he needs to work hard, and we wish him all the best. Okay, so that's all we have for showbiz for this afternoon. And that's it for Joy News today. Many thanks for your company. Please log on to myjoinline.com. You'll find more stories there. Stay with us.